So you've decided to get into City Skylines, but you're not quite sure what it's about or how to play longer than 10 minutes without running out of money and abandoning houses everywhere. You search YouTube and all you can find are advanced tips or most efficient starting design, but those are above your level. You've come to the right spot, my friend. I will show you the actual basics of the game. I will explain like you are five. This is part two B. Ready. Hello world, welcome to my super ultra mega basic City Skylines tutorial for absolute beginners. This is part two B. In part one, we got you from ground zero up to Little Hamlet. In part two A, we brought you from Little Hamlet through all the way to Big Town, which is where we are right now. But we did it without any of the DLCs. I do suggest that if you're brand new to this game and you're struggling to get a foothold, that you go watch both of those two parts before watching this episode. Because today we're going to reverse a couple things that we did in part 2A. We're going to replace those things with the DLC version. The three DLCs that we're going to focus on today are the Industries DLC, the Park Life DLC and the Campus DLC. We won't be making progress towards the next milestone in this video. So if you're looking to see what happens between Big Town and Megalopolis, make sure to stay tuned for the final part, part three. We're gonna tackle the Industries DLC first. You could maybe argue that it's the most difficult DLC to manage out of the three. So why don't we just get it done? Once we understand how it works, it'll make the other two fly by. The Industries DLC is going to replace our zoned industry that we did in part 2a. So I'm going to get rid of all of this farming industry that we laid out with the zoning tool and I'm also going to get rid of a little bit of this industry as well just to give us a demand to work with. So I've just removed many jobs from our city and I've de-zoned a lot of the industry. As you would have learned in part 2a, the general industry chain of events is that one building rips the goods out of the ground, an extractor building. The next building takes the goods that were ripped out of the ground and processes them. We're gonna go to farming because that's what we're using. Then later on we can do more with factories, but we'll get there. But those are our first two stages and it's no different with the DLC. To use the industry DLC, we come back to our districts and area tool, but we now need to paint an industry area. So I'm going to paint a similar area to what I had before, maybe a little bit bigger. And now this area is designated for industry. Rather than label it with a zoned industry indicator, we are first going to name it check out part A. And then we need to put down a building that's relevant to the industry that we want to conquer. So we're gonna be doing farming industry here. We're going to put down our farm main building. And you'll see that you, if you try to put it outside of the zoned area, it will yell at you. So let's put it inside the zoned area. I'm actually gonna fix this zone up a tiny little bit. Great. And let's put our main building right here. Bam. Now check out part A is officially a farming area and we have unlocked some new items and we have one star. Let's figure out what that one star is. If you click on the industry name, it brings this info graphic up and there's a good amount of information here. For the purpose of simplicity, we're going to ignore policies today. We're going to stick to the main screen and this kind of shows us that chain of command that I mentioned earlier. So it shows us the extractor into the processing. So the extractor is the crops. So we're going to extract crops from the ground. We can either sell those crops directly or we can split off of this little pipeline guy and we can process those crops into to either flour or animal product. And then we can sell those usually for a higher profit. The one star is one out of five. The whole point of all three of these DLCs, the industry DLC, the park life DLC, and the campus DLC is that you're trying to get each either industry or park or university up to level five because it'll make you more money. It'll be better for your citizens happiness so on so on. How do we get to level five? Well let's start by getting to level two. Down here is where you're looking for the level information. We're at level one right now. This is what we need 
in order to get to level two. So we need to have produced 500 resources and we need to have 150 people employed here. Once we hit both of those, then we will ding up to level two and unlock more buildings that we can place down. Right now, with just this farm main building down, see how it can employ 50 people. We only have a capacity in our entire industry area of employing 50 people. So we need to up that to at least 150, but probably more to be able to unlock level two. So to get the buildings, you go back down to garbage and industry, you go to the industry type in question, and here are the buildings we can put down. Right now we can put down three types of building and there's four of them. For our main crop buildings, so those ones that are extractors that just take the ground and make it into a resource, we can do a crop field and we can do a fruit field. There's no difference between the two other than visuals and your own immersion. So let's place down a crop field here, a fruit field here, and crop field here. Great. Now, if we want to take those crops and turn them into something, that's where you get a small animal pasture. Do you see the graphic where it points from the crop into the meat? That's the processing. So we're processing crop, making it into meat. Let's place it over here. And the final type of building that we can build right now is a small grain silo. Top left of the little info, you'll see the crop sign. This stores crops. It only stores the raw crops. It doesn't store the meat that is processed. So we'll take, we'll maybe put down two of them here and here. Okay, we need to make sure that all of these buildings have power and it actually looks like they do, which is really phenomenal. I thought I might have to bring this down. So let's press play, watch these guys do their thing. And more importantly, we'll watch this information to see if we can get some workers in here. Right away, I'm seeing that we only have capacity for 135 workers here. I'm gonna put down a couple more crop fields to change that. When you first start an industries area, you'll see that not enough raw materials icon pretty often. Give it a little bit, let them do their thing. And then if they're still causing you problems, then take action. I've placed down two more crop fields, fruit tree fields, and we now have the capacity for 175 workers, which is more than we need. So we're just gonna let this run for a little bit. Guys, we hit level two, but like a dingus, I had the option turned off to hide industry area level up notifications. So I've, I've turned that off now. I'm a big dingus, but here we are. We hit level two. I'll show you the pop-up next time. We now have new goals to reach level three. So we now need to produce 1500 resource units and we need to employ 350 people. Do you remember how I simplified the milestones by saying, see what the unlock gives you, use what the unlock gives you and follow the needs to reach the next level. It's the same thing with the Industries DLC. To see what it gave us, we can look in here and see what's new, or we can read the pop-up. And to see what we need, we look here. So let's put down some buildings to get us to a capacity of over 350 workers. And uh, what buildings can we use? We can use this Farm Workers Barracks. It does stuff that you can read, but here's a simple version. It's new, put one of it down at least. We will put the Workers Barracks over here somewhere. Sure. And we also have a new processing building, two new processing buildings. We have the flour mill, which takes crops and turns them into flour. So we're gonna put it over here. And we have the cattle shed, which takes crops and turns it into meat. So we're gonna put that over here. We also have a small barn, which also stores crops. So let's get some storage happening over here as well. I will say storage is something that is very important in the Industries DLC. I won't get into it too much, there's videos out there that will go through that with you in detail, but just make sure you have plenty of storage down. You'll be fine. And I'm going to put down a couple new fields as well because we've put down new processing plants. So we need to supply those processing plants with something. Let's see what that does as we press play. We have the capacity for 395 workers. Hopefully we have enough people living in the city that we can get 350 people to work here. This is the pop-up that happens when your industry levels up. Look guys, these are the new buildings that we can put down. We've reached level three, and now that we know what buildings are new, we can look here and see what our next goals are. Now we don't have enough people living in the city yet, probably to have 550 people work here. The concept all the way up until level five is the same. See what buildings are new, 
put them down and see what the goals are for you to reach the next level. If you follow these steps, you'll be able to get to level five easy peasy. If you're looking for a hint or a tip, have more buildings that are extractor buildings then you have processing buildings. You'll figure out the nuance of the mix as you play more. We're going to leave our industry there. We'll leave it running. It's fully self-sufficient at this point. And let's move on to the Park Life DLC. In part A, we went through the parks and how they help raise the levels of the residential buildings around them. Today, we're going to build a park in the middle of our of a big residential area. First, we need to take down the buildings that are already here. I'm sorry, everyone, you have to go now. Just like the Industries DLC, in order to start a park life park somewhere, you have to zone the park area. You zone just like you would any other type of zoning and we're just going to do this little inner park. Again, you can always be tidier with your zones but that's what we're doing for now. If you're finding these videos useful you can let me know by leaving a thumbs up on the video. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Let's get started on the park. The park life parks are kept down here in the parks and plazas tab, but you'll notice we have some new options here. We can build a city park, an amusement park, a zoo, or a nature reserve. For today, we're gonna just build a city park. It has some more generic entertainment buildings. The amusement park is exactly what a, you would think an amusement park would be. A zoo is a zoo, and a nature reserve is uh, camping and nature, and you know the drill. Just like with the Industries DLC, we have to put down our first building to make this area official and that is a main gate. Let's do the park main gate and we're gonna put it over here. Congratulations. We now have unlocked buildings and guess what? We have one star and we have some goals to get to the next star. What do you think I'm gonna tell you guys? To get from star one to star two, then to star three and so on. Look at the new buildings that you have. Look at the goals that you have to reach the next level and work with them. For park life, people will often put a fence around the outside of the park. And your next step is typically to put down a path. Let's just do some straight paths to make this easy. Maybe not so straight. And let's put down our first buildings. We have a park plaza and I'm just gonna put things where they fit. We have a park cafe. That makes sense right at the entrance, right? And we have restrooms and an info booth. As we scroll along, there are props at the end here that you can put down that are mostly for decoration, but they also serve to level up the entertainment just a tiny bit. So remember I said to look at what goals you need to achieve to unlock level two. Here are your goals over here. We need to have 220 entertainment value and we need to have 500 people come through here. Let's sort out the entertainment value first. Looking at these buildings, each one of these buildings has an entertainment value. See the park plazas is 50. These little props also have entertainment value. You just kind of need to figure them out yourself. So right now we're at 202 entertainment. If we put down one itty bitty little table, we are at 204. So I'm gonna put down a couple more things and just get this place up to the entertainment value that we need. And we're there. Now we need more visitors. This is not intended to be an advanced tutorial, but my one tip to get more visitors and also to earn you a little bit of cheeky money is to use your park paths and entrances to help people move around your city. So if we come back here to the beginning of the tab, we unlocked this when we first opened up the park. It's a park side gate. We can put this guy over here once we delete this fence and now we can put a side gate over here. Then we can connect the path. Now people will use this park to get from over here to over here. Not only will that increase the number of visitors but they also have to pay every time that they come through the park so that will get us a little bit of extra cash we know we have the entertainment that we need so let's just watch the people in this park go hey guys leave a thumbs up has just reached level two the new buildings that we got are a chessboard and two park piers, and these can only be put on water. So when you're building a park in the middle of a city like this, you're not gonna be able to put them down. As always, the way to move forward with the industry is to look at the new buildings that we have. So in this case, it's the chessboard and look at what our next goals are. We need to just get our entertainment up to 420 
and then have 2,500 people come through. So the next buildings that we put down, we're gonna have to be a bit cheeky with, and we're gonna put down three chess boards because we are limited with the types of buildings that we can use. And look at it, that got us up over the 420 mark. So now it's just a matter of time of waiting until we're at 2,500 total visitors and then rinse, repeat. If you guys notice the trend, it is figure out what new buildings you unlocked with your last level up, figure out what your goals are and meet those goals and wait. The last DLC that we tackle is going to be the campus DLC. It's so similar to the other two in that you start it, you see what the goal is, you see what buildings are available, place the buildings, meet the goal needs, and move forward. This will actually bring us almost past part 2A because in part 2A we had not yet put down any universities. So if you were not playing with the campus DLC, you could come here, you could take the university and you just plop the single asset down and it functions as a university all on its own. What we are going to do instead is use the zoning tool and we're going to zone A campus area. Who would have thought? We're going to do our campus area along the river here. There is some pollution there, which doesn't technically affect the campus area, but it, it'll feel a little bit strange. So we'll we'll work with what we have and, and kind of scooch around some things. So that's going to be the area that we paint for now. And when you go to the education tab, there are different types of campuses that you can use, but they're not all unlocked at the same time. Right now, we only have access to the trade school campus. Later on, we could get a liberal arts college campus and a university campus area the biggest difference between them is just the looks of the buildings most of these buildings you can just build on paths this main building you do have to place it roadside so we're gonna place it right here <laughs> I'm so tempted to do it across from the dump just to be a jerk but we'll move it over here a little bit away from the dump and we'll plunk it in once you plunk it in, you see that these other buildings have opened up. So we have dorms. This is where students live and probably party. And we have the actual education buildings themselves. You can see on the bottom right of each of these info tabs, it does say student capacity. Take note that that is something to be aware of. Let's click on the Strawberry Career Institute and we will rename it to be Turds Tutorials Rock. Here's the deal with the campus DLC. It's the same as the industries and parks DLCs in that you have certain goals that you have to meet to get to the next levels and at each level buildings unlock that you use to then move to the next level. The difference is that for the campus DLC, you have to maintain those goals each year. Once a year, the game will say, okay, the school year has ended, where are you at with these goals? If you are high enough to advance to the next level, you advance. If you are just even enough to stay at the level that you're at, you stay at the level that you're at. But if you've moved down in your numbers to no longer meet the requirements for the current level that you're at, the game will bump you down from say a three star to a two star. So you have to maintain these numbers. So the first things that we're looking for is two academic works, which we will get into. We need 500 students to be actively attending the university and our campus attractiveness needs to be 200. Best way to get campus attractiveness is just to have campus buildings put down in the zoned area. Let's go to the university buildings. We need to get some dorms happening. This area looks like it makes sense for dorms. It's going to be very polluted and we are just going to live with that. The nice thing about the campus buildings is that many, if not all, can be placed on paths, which kind of just looks really nice. So I'm going to put down a bunch of paths and we're going to put down some dorms. Trade school dormitory and let's put, you know, I'm going to delete the buildings. That'll be fine. Let's put our first dorm here and then we'll carry on this side. I like to put down a whole bunch right at the beginning if we can afford it. We'll put down one study hall, one groundskeeping. Again, I like to put it near the front and one book club. Okay, let's see where that landed us with our numbers. We have all of the attractiveness that we need. The students that we need are only going to come through the education system. So if we go to our info views, look at education, we have elementary, high school, and university. We do have 3,000 people eligible to attend university in this city. So there's no reason for us not to be able to hit that 500 mark and look at we're already skyrocketing. So that'll be easy peasy. The last thing is the academic works. You notice it's a tab. There's two 
ways that you can get academic works with campus. You can either fund one yourself, so you can basically pay $50,000 to guarantee that you get an academic work. You choose the area that you want it in. It does not affect the gameplay at all, so I'm just going to give us an artisanry academic work. Now we know that we will get at least one at the end of the school year. The second way that you get them is just up here. Academic work creation chance, 30%. If we bump up the academic staff, you see it goes up to 75%, but wow, that costs so much money every week. Typically, the academic staff, people will keep it at zero and they'll just hope for the good RNG. So once again, we are at the place where we have the buildings placed we have everything that we need to meet the goals and we just sit here and wait now we've hit the threshold for 500 students but this is the academic year we have to be meeting these thresholds when this academic year is at the very end and these ones only tick over at the end. I don't think we're gonna have any problem keeping these students given how many eligible students we have in the city. And if you wanna know how many students you're carrying capacity for, it's shown down here. It's based on the number of buildings that you have and the student capacity that we looked at earlier. You could also see it up here in the education tab by going to university here. Hey, while we were waiting for our university to level up, our park leveled up. Leave a thumbs up, reach level three. Guess what we're gonna do, guys? We we are going to head over to leave a thumbs up. We are going to try to get 720 entertainment with the new buildings that we earned. Guess what? We've reached one goal of 720 entertainment. Now we just have to wait to reach the next goal of 5,000. Do you see the process here? Back to the school year. This is what the academic year report looks like when you don't level up. We had the campus attractiveness that we needed. What we did not have was the students. We ducked under 500 students, but we only had one academic work anyway. We needed two to unlock the next level of the university. So we'll have to get that during the next year. So for now, we were at unrecognized. We are still at unrecognized and that's okay. What we're going to have to do is grow our city in order to hit this 500 mark and stay there. But I'm not going to do that in this episode. Instead, I'm going to leave you guys hanging and we're going to call it there. Just remember the bottom line of these three DLCs. Zone the area that you need to zone first. Put your first building down, farm main building, park main gate, or school administration building. See what the requirements are for you to hit the next level. So resources and workers, visitors and entertainment, academic works, students, and attractiveness. Put down what buildings you can put down with what you've unlocked to meet those goals and then wait. I hope this video made sense to you. If you have any questions about anything that I've covered, please do leave it in the comments below. I will absolutely get back to you. We will continue to level up each of these three DLCs in part three of our super duper basic tutorial. Make sure to like the video if you found it helpful. Subscribe if you want to get notified of when that next video comes out. Until then guys, I will catch you later.